Um, but yeah, um, yeah, today we'd like to give you an overview of Winnishell's Winnishell Day's approach to deploying the OSDU. So we've actually spent over a year now doing quite a thorough test and validation program. We'll give you some, some insights into what we test and validated. Also the various work streams that we did to do that test and validation, but we're now at this point of do we now take that into the next level and do we go into the deployment phase? So we'll talk a little bit about the approach there um, and how that looks for us. Uh, but maybe first as an introduction, yeah, my name's Sean Mackey, uh, so based in Hamburg, Germany, and my role has been the program manager for this one year test and validation um, of the OSDU and now trying to see that into the deployment phase. Yeah, my name is Max de Groot. Uh, might be hard to say, so Max is also just fine. Um, but also working on the OSD implementation as a subsurface reference architect within Windows of Dea and yeah, hope to show you a good presentation today on what we've done. Sure. Yeah, so I guess while people are still coming in, we can go through the, some of the boring stuff first. But uh, yeah, our OSDU program, we actually called it Terra Nova. Uh, since we do see this as new land, new territory that we are entering in. And the purpose or the vision that we had uh, was to really define the subsurface data foundation of the future, to get a more hands-on with the OSDU, see where it works well, see where it doesn't, and to yeah, then know what that means for our, our company going forward. Um, and in, in order to achieve that, we had yeah, several objectives, so five objectives here uh, that we wanted to demonstrate. The first one was that we wanted to bring well data, seismic data and documents into one central place and see if we can reduce the search time for our data managers and our G&G &G users and to also create this environment for quality control and also start to embed some QC automation uh, processes in there. We also wanted to show that we can improve the collaboration between our data managers, our G&G &G experts, um, and also see how different disciplines and their workflows can integrate with this platform. We wanted to enable faster and more efficient workflows. So we did a lot of testing on some of these new AI machine learning workflows on top of the OSDU and also enabled a try to enable a better interaction between our data scientists and our subject matter experts. And I would say last but not least, and this became a major focus towards the end of the project is, well, all of this sounds nice and good, but you need to do this in a cost effective way so that it's, for us, it's not an investment, I would say, it's actually how can we use the OSDU to drive down costs in the company? And that's something we will touch on. Um, so we have a hyper cost focus at the moment in our company. So for us to get to this next deployment phase, the business case needs to be extremely solid and we'll try to show you some of the input we have to that business case. But yeah, so looking over the past year, these were the work streams that we had in order to try to achieve those objectives. So there were six work streams, many of which were run in, in parallel um, and five of those six are now completed. Um, and to give a summary, maybe the first one there, the top right, uh, this took up, I would say, the majority of the program, especially the first six months was dedicated to that work stream itself. So this was implementing the OSDU in our own Azure tenant and also um, utilizing an enterprise data solution from SLB that can enable our data managers to bring data from three assets across three of our business units into the OSDU to visualize and to do the data management workflows. So I think a key component I want to mention here as a mid-sized company is, I guess we don't have the luxury of data engineers, developers, um, and so forth. Um, we're really dependent on yeah, more traditional data management workflows. So we needed a solution that our data managers can use to bring data into the OSDU and do those workflows. So that was a one key component of why SLB has been a, a major partner in our Terra Nova program. Secondly, and second work stream is, well, our most widely used 
subsurface application by far is Petrel. And if we have an OSDU environment and it's not working with Petrel, then it's also not really going to go anywhere for us. So we wanted to test how well Petrel can integrate to the OSDU, streaming seismic, and also testing some of the new AI machine learning workflows that are available there. We also wanted to test some data science use cases. We have a data science team that gets use cases from the business, and we wanted to see how well does that work on the OSDU. So instead of them getting their well data from various different silo databases, can they fetch it using the OSDU APIs, um, run their data analytics workflows, um, and yeah, provide that bit of collaboration between the data science and the subject matter experts. And maybe just to summarize the last few, um, we also wanted to look at a couple of third-party applications that we use. One was Earth Science Analytics for machine learning for geoscience, and the other was Geologic for well planning. Um, and we also demonstrated the connection of those two applications to our OSDU environment. So then we had kind of Petrel, Earth Science Analytics, and Geologic all kind of using the same data. Um, and I just want to mention that one work stream we also focused on was change management. So we had a dedicated work stream on change management um, using the structure ADCAR model. And we found this vitally important because I think we had more than 40 users across the business involved in the testing. And yeah, making sure you're getting the lessons learned from them, the feedback, the surveys, knowing where they are on the change curve, that's sometimes the biggest hurdle and we tend to focus on all the technical stuff so we put a dedicated work stream here and I think that definitely benefited us a lot and we were able to at least make sure the user felt they were also part of the journey and their feedback was taken on board. So that's kind of a nutshell of what was done and I guess Max will also touch a bit later on some of the, the outcomes but maybe bridging over to Max, Max will then touch on what are kind of our challenges around data in Vinishal Dea. So apart from being fashion models, I think we also created a OSU PowerPoint portfolio, which you'll see in a second. Uh, but going back a bit to the why, why we've done this, uh, we have a few pains, um, that's me, uh, <laughs> in the company, and probably these will be similar to, to other uh, companies or people here in the room. Um, yeah, we don't have a master database for subsurface data. We have different databases. Um, we don't have a connection between our legal documents and the data. So yeah, we're working with Seismic, but we don't know if we're still allowed to use it, for example. Um, quality control is very time consuming and we don't have a best practice for it. Um, our archive data is basically not searchable because um, we don't have any tools running up on top of it. Um, we have data in the cloud because we have some cloud applications as well, but we have no control of this data that we push into the cloud. Uh, we have a diverse landscape. Uh, we've heard that before, I think, today, that between business units there are yeah, different ways of storing your data in databases or not. Even a database which is a file structure. Um, where is the latest and latest data? Is it in a project? Is it in a folder? Is it in a database? Uh, which of the databases is it in? And we don't have standards, not even a... Uh, simple naming convention. I guess, yeah, every time you switch, for example, from a bit of physical person, you get a new naming convention. Um, so those are the pains. And then I guess the solution, in short, is then OSDU. It's me again. Um, and then with the solution, we also, of course, have a value because you can bring something in, but we need to show them what is the value of our solution. So the value, uh, we have a centralized database. Um, so we can dissolve some of our old databases, one point to go to now. We have the legal tagging, so we um, adhere to the legal contracts that we have, mitigating the risk of not being compliant to, to the rules and uh, getting penalties. Automated QC, and I guess what's missing here maybe is also the, the metadata enhancement. So we, yeah, we, we make sure we don't have any duplication in there, we add metadata to it, but we also have an automated QC now and a scoring uh, that we've never had before. OSDU can catalog, so also our data that is in the archive system uh, can be made searchable now. Um, we have a standardized approach uh, to storing and organizing or accessing our data. 
whether it's cloud or on-prem, because with the on-prem stuff or in the archive stuff, we can, we can make it searchable at least for the time being. We have a unified landscape. Um, so we're doing everything the same in every business unit, still letting the business unit being the owner of their own data. Latest data, so you have the golden record, so you don't have to go through the different versions, you know where it is. The last one, I guess this is the whole story, but you don't have to explain that too much, what the, what the idea behind it is. And we have standards, so we can finally have a technology that works for, for data governance as well. Um, then next, yep, yeah, there we go. Then these are kind of the workflows that we've tested with OSDU in the middle. Uh, I'll, stop, I'll start on the, the right top side. Um, kind of, if you've been to London, I presented there as well on what we've done. Um, so the, the enterprise data solution, we trained 15 data managers on it. Um, who did the ingestion, the visualization, the, the QCing of the data. Um, also testing this against the criteria that we had uh, and basically concluded that we could use this tool uh, as our future data uh, application um, on top of the OSDU. Um, and it's also supporting all of our most important data types apart maybe from one, which is 2D Seismic, uh, which will come early next year, I think, and that will also be the moment where we say we go for deployment. Uh, and that was also our advice, which Sean will go uh, on a bit later. Then the second workflow that we've tested is then the Petrel PTS, where we had 10 geoscientists working on, um, on the workflows between OSDU and Petrel, ingesting data, liberating or, uh, yeah, ingesting data or liberating data from Petrel into OSDU, but also consuming the data. Um, but also we did some, um, with Patel PTS come some AI or machine learning workflows that we've tested and in our business unit in Norway where we did most of the testing, <clears throat> they came up with a uh, efficiency gain of 50% for the workflows that we have um, in combination with OSDU and then Patel PTS. Then the third one is Data IQ, um, which is kind of then the, the um, data science part where uh, we had two use cases of which one was fetch data from OSDU, do some reprocessing on the, on the well logs, um, some machine learning or AI on it, and then push that back into OSDU and then consume it with Petrel. Um, but of course, data IQ is one of, you can use other um, data science tools, I guess, on top of it as well. Then on the left side, we have three other components of which two are cloud applications that we use at the moment. And the third one is a Delphi native application called Opportunity Assessor. Um, where we, yeah, for data, for earth science analytics, for example, we push seismic into OSDU and then consume that with Petrel, um, vice versa. And also we push data from Petrel, uh, well data into OSDU and then geologic consume that to show, for example, these um, well paths and then with the logs on top of it. Um, and some interpretation like um, markers. And I think I got everything on that one, yeah. Then this is basically showing our journey, the change journey. I think change has also been named, uh, mentioned a couple of times today. Um, I don't think I've ever worked on a project where emotion was such a big factor <laughs> every day. <laughs> um, people, you're fighting against people with preconceived ideas, biased views, and I guess your, your main, your main uh, enemy is fear, fear of something new, because we all like our old stuff. If it works, it works, or if it's comfortable. Um, but also the fear of new uh, good tools replacing potential jobs, which is not the case. Um, but yeah, there is that fear component, um, but also fear of a tool that's maybe not 100% working, uh, despite actually covering all your critical workflows. But you can use that feedback or you can use that fear as well um, to change it around. If you, if you use that well, if you can explain it, if you know what the fears are and you can explain it to them in a better way or you can use the feedback Provided, for example, for the for the enterprise data solution tool, um, the feedback that we gave to SLV back, they improve the tool. We bring that back to our users, kind of making them feel more comfortable that okay, we are listened to, um, we are part of this whole process. That's kind of the change, the change that you need to, or the change topic that you need to keep in mind that you always keep them informed and involved. Um, then there's also negative stakeholders, which maybe only listen to 10% of your story. And there's always the 10% that's really bad. <laughs> Spread it, create fires, we need to extinguish them. Um, yeah, that's basically what you do on a daily basis. 
Then on top of that, we're kind of proving the technology. You're also fighting all these emotions. Unfortunately, within the company, we're now in a phase of hard cost cutting. So on top of that, we also need to show a good cost picture. Um, but I think at the end, you know, with a good motivation, uh, motivational team and a good change management, I think we got there um, in the end. And we even managed to get all the critical stakeholders in the closet of our project to recommend the deployment of OSDU, which is IT, um, exploration, reservoir management, and also our managing directors from the business units. They all said, let's go for OSDU. Um, let's push forward. I think I got that. Yeah, so maybe just to, to highlight, I'm sure many of you are probably going through some of this. And yeah, for us, it was daily, weekly. And some stakeholders, we thought, yeah, are we ever going to change their mind? But at some point, I can't put my finger on really why, but the tipping point did happen. And I would say our most skeptical and conservative stakeholders also changed their minds just through, I guess, also Max demonstrating to them in super detail the workflows, the visualization. And then I guess it took many, many times, but it is, it is possible. And I guess we were thankful at the end, as you said, all the, all the key stakeholders not only were positive, but they also put forward a recommendation to deploy. So I think that also is detriment to uh, thankful for the change management support as well that helped us along the way. Basically what it shows is that every issue you solve you think you're going up, but then there's a massive tumble down, start again, and then slowly you get up to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give one more. Right? But, uh... Oh, yeah, I forgot one. Sorry, it's still me. Um, <laughs> managing directors, they said, let's go for deployment. So we also showed them different deployment scenarios, of course, uh, of which one is the most simple one, I guess. It's a single source of truth. Um, so we replace some of our databases, uh, go for the OSDU, um, then with that establish this single source of truth with no third party application integration for the time being. Um, then the second one is basically number one plus. Um, so we have the single source of truth, but we also connect our cloud applications to it. Um, so we have a greater control of our data in the cloud. Um, also empowering our data managers to use yeah, these, these applications better and more. Then the third one, which is not something we want, is a hybrid environment. So you kind of leverage your current infrastructure and investments and connect the OSDU to the on-prem um, uh, application environment. Sorry, I shouldn't have <laughs> drinking the Pepsi on <laughs> stage. Um, this comes with significant technical complexity, high cost and, and poor end-to-end -end user because you have to switch between um, virtual machines probably and it's not going to help the, the whole case. Then there is deployment scenario number four, which is probably not really feasible at the moment. So this would be our dream uh, scenario um, or deployment. So this is kind of more strategic way of, of looking at it, um, where we go fully integrated. So we host OSDU and application environment on our Azure uh, to reduce complexity and enable full integration. Um, like I said, this is considered as a strategic target for the future then. Then there's also the fifth one, uh, that's a no deployment where we also showed some alternatives with a cost picture even, um, and where we then also utilize our traditional databases, basically go forward the way we did, um, which then comes with some risks like no open access, no modern search, no legal tagging, no automatic QCing. Um, it will be harder to enable AI and machine learning workflows on your data because it's all spread around. Um, so that's definitely something that we would not advise, but these would be our deployment scenarios. And I think Sean is gonna go more into our actual deployment scenario. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, so just to highlight, I guess we had to show that was a request from our steering committee and managed directors in the business units, what are the scenarios, even no deployment, so that it's really transparent, all the ways that, they, all the different scenarios that they could choose from. Um, and in the end, the scenario that we proposed was to basically get started with a deployment scenario with the smallest step possible that is cost effective. And that was scenario one. And this is basically a deployment of the OSDU and the enterprise data solution for our business unit in Mexico, which is one of our major business units, uh, both operated and non-operated assets. And they have some of the most fundamental data challenges that Max mentioned. So 
There is no master repository in Mexico. All their data is unconsolidated on the file system, and it's from pre-legacy mergers and acquisitions of companies. Um, and they're crying out for us to really support them with the OSDU by creating a, a clean environment for data managers and for the G&G &G community uh, that also comes with modern search and visualization um, that can support them in their, in their daily business. Um, and um, yeah, part of that deployment scenario is we'll bring their well-related data into the OSDU and the associated documentation with that. Um, but we will likely keep the seismic data on-premise just because most of their workflows are still in an on-premise environment and we don't want lots of transfer costs, but we will catalog that seismic data and make sure that's searchable in the OSDU and also that the file path is there. So that's kind of the, the first approach. Um, and then the second step is that we're going to use the OSDU to rationalize its roughly 10 corporate databases for well and seismic related data that we have. Some of them are not even maintained anymore and we need to find alternatives. And that rationalization alone is close to 2 million euros of savings, which more than pays for uh, OSDU deployment for our business unit, Mexico. So that was our yeah, deployment scenario proposal. But our feedback also from our leadership is that well, we don't just want to do this for Mexico now. If we're going to do this, we might as well consider what a global phase deployment will look like, which I will also touch on. Um, but before I do, I, I want to mention that in order to achieve a more global phase deployment, you can't get away from having a cloud data and application strategy. Um, and that's one thing that we've had to push. I guess that's mostly been pushed from the OSDU project and something we've been working on for the past year. And we see that if you want to get to this fully integrated environment, you need to archive your data in Azure. You want your OSDU deployed in the same cloud environment. And you also want your applications to be running in the same cloud environment, even if they're not yet OSDU compatible, just so that over time as they do, at least you're set up in the right infrastructure to enable that. And for that, you need a cloud and common cloud and application strategy, which is something we will uh, finalize by the end of this year. And it's also how we see our IT and digital coming closer together. And this is where this cost saving now comes in, that we see that this strategy can really enable us on the storage savings. Uh, it can support our application rationalization project that we have. It can help us build a more right-sized infrastructure and it also enables us to treat, achieve these data-driven aspirations. So those four areas you see below, those are projects, global projects now being initiated within our company. And we kind of put forward, made it clear that you can't do this in isolation. You need to do this under one common strategy. Uh, and we now have kind of buy-in that at least the OSDU is the way forward when it comes to our future data foundation. So I think this is the last slide from myself, and this is now really the final pieces that we are putting together for the deployment strategy. So I think we have the all clear to go for, for Mexico, but this is now looking at it in a, in, a, in a broader context. So the first thing that's being triggered is how do we prepare our data for the OSDU? And there is now a global cleanup being triggered to deduplicate data. But probably most importantly is actually we want to shift most of our data into cheap archive storage because we have something like 70% on high performance machines and the vast majority of that's not been used in a year. So we have major costs that we want to want to mitigate here. And then we want to rationalize our databases. And as we, again, I said 2 million from that rationalization alone. And I would say multiple times that from the cleanup and moving data to cheaper storage. Um, and that's kind of the precursor of what we need to do to then implement the OSDU for Business Unit Mexico. And we aim to do that uh, by the end of next year. As Max said, there's one key feature we're waiting for, and that's the 2D uh, ingestion uh, from the Enterprise Data Solution. Um, and we need this prep work done on the cleanup in, in order for us to do that. So once that's in place, 
And in parallel, I guess our business unit Egypt and um, Germany are also doing a cleanup that we can then scale the OSDU and the SEDS environment there. Um, but what is the next step there is actually is then to test how does a, our application environment look like in the cloud and to do some testing between or we still we, that we can host our third applications in a new Azure environment and then start to see how that works a bit more with OSDU, not for all, but at least for a few of our key applications that um, are the brunt of our work uh, workflows. And then from there, it's kind of a global scale out. So this is what we're piecing together now, basically. And the main value that we think we can deliver is related to rationalization of applications, quite significant storage savings, and we're looking at this from a total cost of ownership perspective. So what is the total cost of ownership today? And how does that look when you configure this new environment? And so far we see it's quite a positive business case, uh, especially in times where we have very severe cost cuts going on right now, which makes the deployment extremely difficult. Um, but it's looking uh, at least likely that uh, we'll be going ahead with a deployment. But the decision for that deployment is on the 24th of November, so it's not confirmed yet, um, but we already see kind of positive um, yeah, feelings from the main stakeholders, and we've been verifying them with the key business case topics up front. So at least in 2024, the Mexico deployment we see is, is highly likely, and will come, come with it uh, a cloud and application strategy to support and to orient our IT and digital initiatives. So yeah, that's where we are today. and. Our saying in our project is OSDU what? OSDU you. <laughs> <laughs>